Hey everyone, Matt here. We're gonna be replacing the crossover components on these Realistic Nova 8 speakers. Replacing capacitors is the best update you can do to old speakers. They dry out over time and tend to block out higher frequencies. I'll talk about the differences and improvements that I hear with the new components at the end of the video. I found these speakers at a thrift store and I'll be restoring and customizing them with new grills and lighter wood veneer for a local coffee shop. On to the build. I removed the six screws that hold the crossover back plate and tried to pry it up, but I couldn't get it and was concerned about breaking it. I run my soldering iron between 7 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit and use leaded solder that contains a small amount of silver for better electrical properties. This is the old 6.8 UF electrolytic capacitor and this is the new film capacitor. Film is bigger and much more expensive, but won't degrade over time like electrolytic caps. The peg where the capacitor and blue wire connect was oddly shaped, so I ended up connecting the blue wire to the lead on the capacitor before securing and soldering it into place. If you want to make your crossover last the test of time, don't rely on solder for holding components in place. Always wrap the lead securely and use glue to hold the components in place. I usually use hot glue, but I did not in this video because I'll be doing additional work to these speakers. You know how you have those brain farts while working on projects sometimes? Yeah, this was one of those. There are actually eight screws that hold the crossover in place and I just didn't see the other two at first. It's so much easier to work on this board outside of the speaker cabinet. <laughs> the capacitor I'm removing here is the only capacitor that's in circuit for the woofer and we're replacing it with an electrolytic capacitor rather than a film capacitor. Its purpose is just to block high frequencies from being sent to the woofer, so it's not necessary to spend the extra $13 per capacitor to use a film cap as you likely couldn't hear the difference. The Nova 8s came out in the mid 70s and are a three-way design, which means the 12 inch woofer handles the base, the two drivers next to each other control the mid-range, and the tweeter at the top handles the high frequencies. I forgot to turn my filter back on. Don't be like me. Good airflow and gloves are a must when working with lead solder. Speaking of solder, this is me replacing the only resistor in the crossover. Resistors limit the amount of current that passes through them. Usually you see them in a crossover to lower the volume of a driver that puts more sound out than the other components in the speaker, typically the tweeter. The more common Nova 8B uses the same mid-range drivers and tweeter, but boasts an improved woofer. There's some awesome upgrades out there for them, but you would need to upgrade the woofer in the Nova 8 in order to utilize them. I'm doing a little mod to these potentiometers, or tone control switches. You can think of them as variable resistors that control the volume of certain frequencies. Over time, they dry out and collect dirt inside, which can affect the sound. They also begin to make scratchy noises when turned. These ones are sealed, so to spray this control lube inside, I had to very carefully drill a hole in each one. After rotating them back and forth a few times, I covered the holes with painter's tape. Soldering leaves behind nasty burned residues that can be corrosive, especially if you use flux. It's always good to use some rubbing alcohol to clean up each solder joint to remove these residues. The whole Nova lineup from Radio Shack were pretty popular and are easily worth the $30 to $100 price point that you'll see them at thrift stores for. They'll be a great addition to the coffee shop once I'm done customizing them. I put the fiberglass back inside the speaker for testing purposes, but I will be replacing it with ethically harvested wool as part of the upgrade. Dealing with fiberglass dust is not something I wish upon anyone. Replacing the capacitor has definitely made this one sound better. It is definitely brighter. It sounded like it also might have had a little bit more bass, but I'm skeptical. The biggest thing you're gonna notice is vocals, hi-hats, like a little cymbal rattle, that sort of stuff. It's just more pronounced when you replace all these components. I'm also gonna be fully restoring these, completely redoing the cabinets. If you wanna follow along with that process, I would, I would love it. 